Hey, Shalom to our Ma'akim and Akwathim, and Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Greetings to my brothers and sisters in the Lord. You know, I came across this article on my breaking news app, and all in the spirit, you know, uh, many scriptures came to mind, and many thoughts came to mind. I just wanted to share some of my thoughts, and I pray that they'd be edifying. You know, this, this article is about a woman who is homeless, man, and, uh, uh, of course, as you can see, she's an Israelite woman, a daughter of Zion. And this is going to be a hard, trying time for many of the daughters of Zion and many people in general. You know, Gentile, heathen, and Israelite alike. In the times to come very shortly, uh, from coast to coast in Babylon, America, you know, from economic woes to, you know, many, many of the things that the people of the Lord have been um, prophesying, you know, for years now. We see the unfolding and the unraveling of these prophecies slowly coming to pass and the stage is being set methodically by Abinawa Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, to bring judgment upon this place. You know, in Jacob's trouble, you know, many things are, many changes are about to happen. And when destruction comes, it shall come suddenly. So suddenly a lot of uh, sisters are going to be in this situation and we're going to talk about why this is going on you know we're gonna get into it man because it's not just limited to her but there's millions that are facing homelessness but uh for some it's a time of affliction a time of re refining a time of uh increasement of long suffering and other fruits of the spirit is patience you know because we should also serve the lord in a, a low estate but for many for many more it's a judgment and you know according to the scriptures and the prophecies therein uh, which we're going to get into pertaining to um, Isaiah chapter 32. This is going to be one of the uh, curses that needs to be fulfilled upon the uh, daughters of Israel, man, the daughters of Zion. We're going to talk about why, and we're going to get into uh, get into this a little deeper. And I pray that this be an edifying video, you know, that we may all learn from and be edified by, especially towards the daughters of Zion. But let's go ahead and get into it. I'll read the article. We can watch the video. Then we'll get into some scripture regarding the topic. Okay. Woman homeless for two years in Virginia asks for help. What more does it take? Richmond, Virginia. A Richmond woman has been homeless for two years. Reached out to CBS 6 problem solvers trying to find a home. Sharon Smith, 51, says she has been homeless for two years. Basically, basically living on the streets of Richmond. Okay. So she's reaching out to the news station To, to, to Esau but She's not reaching out and crying out to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai man You know She's not trusting in that We're going to get into that Smith says she frequently stays on Richmond's south side But circumstances have often Have her moving around I've slept in cars I sleep in people's screened in porches I've even slept at, at the bus stops On 31st and Hole Street Smith said It's lit up on Hole Street Smith says she has been working with Richmond Behavioral Health Authority on finding a place to stay. And that's the read of Egypt, man. And all these things are going to fail you women. It's going to fail. Uh, the whole welfare state is going to collapse, man. Social security is going to collapse. These stock markets are going to collapse. The, everything's going to fold, man. It's going to be like the Great Depression all over again. And, you know, what are you women going to do? You know, I filled out about 30 sheets of paperwork, Smith said. However, she said she was told she does not qualify for the assistance. What more does it take for me to have a home, she asked. And, you know, I'm going to cut right there. You know, typically what it takes to uh, to have a home typically is a, is a uh, how can I say it without sounding like a, like a jackass, man? Typically, you need to get a job. You need to work, save your money and apply for a loan. And if you're a first time home buyer, you know, they have different grants and um, depending on what area you're trying to live in, different things in place to where they can put you in a home. But the housing market is going to fold. So a lot of people who have houses now are going to be hitting these streets very soon. You know, it's just part of the plagues of Babylon, you know. But nonetheless, it seems to be um, a certain level of entitlement that this, that this uh, woman has. Like, you know, it's like somebody should just give her a home. Like everyone else doesn't have to work hard for what they have. You know, officials with Richmond Behavioral Health Authority said they cannot address individual cases because of privacy laws. 
So they didn't want to give her a lawsuit because she could turn around and sue them if they, if they uh, disclose, you know, the specifics on why or why not she qualified or didn't. Okay? And she didn't qualify. Additionally, RBHA said they are actively working with about 4,000 individuals and families experiencing mental health and or substance use disorders, including some who are homeless. Okay? So this is another thing, man. The homelessness... There are, it's like in every major city, there's homeless people, man. Homelessness is, is, a, is a growing epidemic in Babylon, man. You know? Uh, here in the metropolitan area, man, in the Washington, D.C. area, man, you go out in certain areas. And even up there in Baltimore, man, all over the place, in all these major cities, man, you got like b- little mini tent, tent strips. You know, strips where there's nothing but tents. People laying down pallets, you know, and... uh. And, um, you know, falling asleep with their little sleeping bags outside, man. Under bridges. You know, it's all over D.C., man. You know, you see it in Baltimore, too. Under the main bridges in Baltimore. people, Man, a lot of people are dealing with homelessness. So out of every... And then you even have college students, man, who are sleeping in their cars and living in their cars, man. Chasing that uh, Edomite diplomacy, man. Chasing that Edomite education, man. Which is going to fail them, too. So everybody's going to be in for a rude awakening, but... Basically, what makes this this sister uh, special from anyone else who's going through the same situation, man? To feel as though somebody should just give her a home. And there are some, you know, scripturally, there are some, uh, I don't want to say loopholes, but things to where she should be helped lawfully under the laws of Yahweh Bashim and Yahweh Shai. You know, if she may be a widow, we should help the widows. You know, she might have been married and her husband had died, you know, or, you know, that's about it <laughs> you know widowhood you know but a lot of these women are, are single in the, in the situations they're in because of feminism and that's just the truth and we're going to get into that and that's what's going to be special uh towards the towards the daughters of zion because collectively they they chose to be strong black and independent and to be without the israelite man and now what we're seeing is the chickens coming home to roost you know and it's sad nonetheless you know I wouldn't wish homelessness on anybody, but the reality is, and prophetically and scripturally, the reality is that this is what it's going to be for a lot of you daughters of Zion, man. This is what it's going to be. Not just for you. It's not going to be only you. A lot of people are going to be on the streets. Shoot, even the scriptures tell us it's going to be insurrection uh, against those who fear the Lord. We're going to be casted out of our houses. So even the men and the women of the Lord are going to be facing homelessness. But we have a stronghold, and that stronghold is Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, and he's he's going to provide. For, for his children and for his elect and for his one third. But if you don't got your how about me, how shy you're going to be short in these times to come, man. And a lot of these women are going to be short, man, because they don't trust in the Lord. They trust in Esau, Babylon Esau, okay, and his various welfare programs, which are going to fail you women. This is just the truth, okay? Uh, RBHA has two housing programs designed to serve people who are living on the streets. And their case managers continue to search for housing for their clients, officials said. Okay, that's that's the end of that's the end of the article. Let's go ahead and watch the video and let's get into some edification about it. Thanksgiving fee, Sharon Smith tries to make plans on where she's going to sleep tonight. Smith, who is homeless, tells me all she wants is a roof over her head, but she fears red tape is getting in her way. Um Homeless. Homeless and looking for a safe place to sleep. It's lit up on Hall Street. Sharon Smith has been homeless two years and circumstances often force her to move around. I've slept in cars. I've slept in people's uh, screened in porches. I've walked the street. I've even slept at the bus stop up on 31st and Hall Street. And I've also slept over Churchill at the bus stop. Smith says she has worked with Richmond Behavioral Health Authority. Oh, I filled out about 30 sheets of paperwork. But Smith says she's told she doesn't qualify. What more does it take for me to have a home? Smith says she is frustrated by what she believes is red tape. I just want to be healthy and happy. Because of laws protecting clients, Richmond Behavioral Health Authority cannot talk about individual cases. This afternoon, RBHA told me right now they're actively working with about 4,000 individuals and families experiencing mental health and or substance use disorders, including some who are homeless. 
RBHA has two housing programs designed to serve people who are living on the streets, and their case managers continue to search for housing for their clients. Yep, that's pretty much it, man. You know, let's get into some scriptures, yo. Isaiah chapter 36, verse 6. Lo, thou trustest in the staffs of this broken reed on Egypt, man. And we know that America is spiritually Egypt and Babylon, man. America is all the, all the kingdoms wrapped up in one, man. You know, spiritually. With Sodom and Gomorrah over here. Spiritually Sodom. You know, it's just, it's just a um, conundrum of all these kingdoms. But the point is, whereon if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trust in him, man. Our people, especially the daughters of Zion, which is what I'm going to get into in particular, have trusted in American society, man, in these government welfare programs and all these programs, man, and have put this as the way of life. You know, Eve has been deceived all over again. And what we're going to see even now and increasing in the future is these systems begin to fail her is the Edomite Babylonian uh, society of America begin to turn their back on her. And what what is Eve going to do? What is the so-called daughter of Zion going to do, man? You should be trusting in Yahweh Bosh and Yahweh Shad. You want to be healthy and happy? There are laws, statutes, and commandments that were forewritten from the days of ancient for our people, for the nation of Israel, man, to follow, to be happy, to have sustenance, to have have a, a solid foundation okay in our life and there are roles for women and there are roles for men okay and you can tell you know she's 51 man i'm sure she's not no you know how can i say it we know what we're dealing with here in america man Cut, 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 cut on the entertainment cut on the media what's being pushed man the hypersexualization of the woman you know, which only goes but so far because once you hit a certain age, your 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 um your sexual prime is no longer uh, used as any type of collateral for anything. And once the Federal Reserve collapse, man, prostitution is not going to be, you know, what you're going to prostitute yourself for. That's when women in large here in America are going to realize that they need a man. It's not going to be worth sleeping around for a toothpaste, getting on your knees for a bar of soap. Bending over somewhere in the alley for uh, for some tampons or pads or for anything, you're gonna say, "Damn, I wish I had one man, and preferably a man of the Lord that can uh, help me." You know, because it's all about the male. Even though this this society tells you it tells you opposite and otherwise, but as you can see, even spiritually and quite literally. These 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 welfare programs and all these programs are, are were created by men. So so spiritually, our women are still relying on a man. It's just not the Israelite man. And spiritually, these even a lot of these Israelite men are not are not relying on on on, on their uh on their counterpart, which is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which is their covering. Okay, a lot of these men are relying on their women. You know, but. Here in the spiritual Egypt, you know, in America, you know, everybody who's relying on this place in any type of way, man, they're going to be they're going to be cut short, man. They're going to be let down just as she was let down. You know, you have these women relying on what child support checks. They're relying on their alimony from divorce rape. They're relying on this dollar bill in general. You got women who cast away all uh, morals and virtue just to get ahead in this society. You understand? You have women that say, oh, well, I only stripped or prostituted myself. I was only a stripper through college to pay for college. And a lot of people find that acceptable, which is pure wickedness, man. And a lot of people who are doing this are going to find out the hard way that the best thing they could have did was fear the Lord and do things how the Lord said do it. Okay? According to the scriptures, a daughter shall be given unto marriage. Okay? As a virgin. Okay? By her father, she should be given into marriage by her father to a man, and that in that marriage will 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 be a bind and a covenant. Okay, the Lord hates divorce. A man shall be with his woman, should be with his woman, you know, with his wife, even if he adds unto himself more women. He shall not neglect nor um nor uh lay aside his duties of of husbandry unto his wife, which is to pretty much provide for her. 
Do you understand? Now, now, now Esau turned that and twisted it with divorce, how he does it. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll say, you know, you can go out and remarry, which is adultery. You go out and remarry or go out and be single and mingling while you're still taking the resources of your, of your first, of your first husband. You understand that's wickedness and that's going off. But pertaining to the law, you should be given under marriage in the, in the event that there, that there is a divorce or you are put away because you have not been a good wife, because you have not been a good maid, because that's what you're supposed to be as a wife. You ought to go back to the house of your father. Okay? You women are supposed to be taken care of. You're not built to be out here by yourself. You're not built to be out here unled, gadding abroad. Okay? And here in Babylon has been a, um, a society in which supports that. Okay, and that's why we have wickedness that abound throughout the land. More bastard slips of children. We have, it's just, it, look look at the black community. It's a mess. And it was systemically and purposely done so to, through the woman, to destroy the whole nation, man. And now our, our, our people are degenerate. Jacob, Israel has become a degenerate plant, but the Lord has sealed his election. So not everybody is gone in the mind, but most of our people are. Okay. But, you know, leaning on this rock, this breed of Egypt is going to cause, you know, it's going to go into your hand and pierce it, man. Pertaining to Isaiah 36 and 6. Now, it's also spiritual because we're also told in the, in the book of Luke, I believe it's chapter 17, verse 32, to remember Lot's wife. Okay? Because when the, the powers that be bring down the society in a, in a, in a, um, you know, bring bring in the chaos, all the chaos that's going on all over the world. You know, it's going to come here to America. When this comes here, that's going to be the chaos, and they're going to try to bring in a new order, okay, a new world order after this, okay. And all all these people who are trusting in Babylon now and have not began to trust in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai in His ways, okay, in His order, they're literally going to get their hands pierced with an RFID chip to try to. Uh, to sell out to the to the belief of a lie that this society is going to keep going under a new uh, economic system, and it will for a short for a short period of time. But those who who, who have faith in the Lord know that Yahweh Shai Mashiach is coming back to dash through the heads of kings and take all the crowns and to crumble all these cities, all these countries, and to reinstate the nation of Israel. Okay, his true and faithful servants of the of Israel to to uh to thrones to rule over all the nations okay and the end of it all so we know this place has to fall okay but we can't rely on it you know and homelessness is going to like i said earlier it's even going to affect the upright and even those who fear the lord there's going to be insurrection upon those who fear the lord but you know what the lord is going to take care of us even if we die for his namesake you understand at least we have a hope we're prisoners of hope but you know, leaning and hoping in this Babylonian society, especially for you women, because you do more so than the men. You do more so than the men. No one cares when the male when a man is homeless. No one gives a damn about a, 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 a black male that is homeless. No one cares about that. Okay, but the fact that you are a woman is no longer going to be um, enough in that day and time in which we're coming in to receive help and pity. Okay, because everyone, a lot of people, are about to be going through this epidemic here. Okay, that we see this homelessness. A lot of people are going through it now, and that whole uh, sense of entitlement of uh, what more do I have to do to get a handout, or what more do I have to do to be taken care of, is not going to work. And then that day, and then that time, you're going to realize that it would have been better to fear the Lord and to keep His commandments, because at least you would have had the safety and the um and the solidarity of having a man. Okay, you don't want to be alone as, as a woman homeless, roaming these streets. Where any man can come and take you, where anything can happen to you, you can't build. What are you gonna build? You can't. In a bare bone society, it takes men to build societies and men to build. Okay, and we're about to go into a bare bone society very soon, man. And there's gonna have to be a sense of community. You know, even the scripture tells us that we're gonna have to live as pilgrims amongst the earth. So this is gonna be reality for a lot of people. So I'm not knocking on anybody who's homeless, man. Or anybody, you know, I'm not trying to rag on anybody who's going through this, but concerning the daughters of, uh, of Zion, this is a judgment that's going to have to come to pass on our on our on our sisters, man. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 through 8. And that judgment, by the way, is going to have to be the price of feminism. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 through 8. 
Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh his flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Okay, that's very important because there's a lot of brothers who experience homelessness, but their heart has not departed from the Lord. Therefore, they're going to be taken care of, and they have been taken care of, and they are being Shalom. I'm going to continue, man. The, the app timed out and cut off on me. But they have been taken care of and will be taken care of. You understand? Because their heart has not departed from the Lord. Okay? They don't trust in this system. And they're not going to trust in that RFID chip when it when it, when it it drops. Okay? When, it, when they implement it. Okay? Let's continue. For he shall be like the heath in, he shall be like the, uh, heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and in the salt land and not be inhabited. Okay? That, that's kind of like what that woman is going through spiritually, man. She's in she's in a parched place in the wilderness. She's sleeping at bus stop. She's uncomfortable. She has no comfort through her affliction. Okay? There is no comfort for her through this affliction. You understand? But let's continue. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. And that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in a year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So even through trials, afflictions, homelessness, the Lord's gonna take care of you when you fear him and when you do his works, man. He's going to. All the prophets of old went to trials and afflictions, man. It was thrown in lion dens, was thrown in furnaces, you know, um, imprisoned. You know, the Lord had angels coming through, holding it down. You know what I'm saying? So on a spiritual level, man, we just need to fear the Lord, man. No matter what we go through, even through, even facing homelessness, because the Lord's going to have us, you know? But the reality of the fact is, is that most of the daughters of Zion, even most of the men are not, are not on that spiritual level, man, and they're not on that spiritual page. When it all when it all comes crashing down and burning down, man, it's gonna be all hell. It's gonna be really bad for you, woman. These lawless Israelite two third men are gonna be a sword against you, lawless Israelite two third woman, as well as the heathen, as well as the, as well as the Gentile alike. It's gonna be it's just gonna be really bad. It's gonna be a lot of rape going on, a lot of abuse, a lot of murder, a lot of um because because they don't have no trust in the Lord. You understand? So that carnality is gonna creep in. They're going to get pure carnal. And this is going to get really, really bad out here. So we got to get ready to see this, man. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 32, verse 9 to 12, which is directly pertaining to uh, this judgment that's going to sweep across many of the daughters of Zion. Okay. When these food stamps get cut, when the housing market crash, when the Federal Reserve crash, and you women don't have anything. And the Lord tell, is telling you, daughters of Zion, that you're not going to have anything. You're not going to have. He's taking it all from you. OK, because of the collective guilt and the collective transgression that you have done against the sons of Israel. Because the Lord said he's going to uh, his sons are going to receive the power. OK, the Lord said a man's going to be like a made into fine gold, man. The, the, the elect men of the Lord, man, we're, we're going to be good. Job chapter five says we're going to be good. When others are hungry, man, we're going to be eating. When others have nothing, we're going to have abundance. OK. And according to the scriptures, man, uh, you woman shall be saved in childbearing and holiness, okay, and and, and uh, sobriety. And uh, and if you're bearing children, you know, and if you're, 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 you're if you're saved in childbearing, that's gonna that that essentially means that you're saved through a man of the Lord bearing his children. You understand? Because there's an order to all of this, man. And and what I've come to notice that a lot of you daughters of Zion are not in order, man. Y'all don't y'all don't believe in order. Y'all don't have no order. And the Lord's gonna bring an order back because everything that's been made upside down is gonna be esteemed as the potter's clay. He's gonna smash it, he's gonna shatter it, he's gonna remove it, he's gonna destroy it. So he can bring order, his order back as well. Cause the Lord even believes in, in uh order out of chaos as well. <laughs> He's going to bring that, that hell, that chaos, that destruction. He's going to clean slate. He's going to reestablish his order at the end of the day. Okay. Let's go. Let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 32, verse 9 to 12. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. 
for the vintage shall fail. The gathering shall not come. This woman, man, the vintage failed her. The gathering did not come for her, man. She's doing that crying because she had nowhere to live and had been homeless for two years. Okay, she's no longer in her prime of her beauty, man. You can look at her and tell she's probably a damn feminist. Probably had a couple brothers on child support. Probably, man, she's not about she's not about Israelite male superiority, man. She's not about patriarchy. You know, this is the same woman that would probably come up uh, come up against this truth. Okay? It just is what it is. Now she's suffering. Because real, real, realistically, man, most of you daughters of Zion are not about Israelite male superiority, man. They're not about it. Y'all want to be, y'all want to be God. Y'all want to be put over over the Israelite man. You're gonna be right up there with Esau, okay? You want to fit into his society. The Lord's about to destroy his society. When he, as he destroys his society, you're gonna go through hell with him, okay? Because your your safety line, your safety net, which was the Israelite man, is it, you 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 separated from him. You separated from him, okay? And it's just the truth. It's just the damn truth, you know, in this history. It's real, it's history. Some people, you know, a lot of these women I see, you know, if it don't feel right to them, if it, if it makes them feel bad, then it's, oh, it's wrong. Oh, it's evil. Oh, you're, you're, you're a basher. Oh, nah, we telling the truth over here. It's the truth, you know? There's a lot of this single parent household stuff going on. There's a lot of wickedness going on amongst, amongst, the, uh, amongst Jacob. And it's all scriptural, man. You know, it's all written in scripture already, man. That our woman will rule over us and that our, our children will be our oppressors, man. Through the system. But who bit into that? Who who bit into uh, to devil daddy Esau's serpent fruit? Who bit into it? You know, the woman bit into it, man. And sold out to it. 110% to feminism. Okay. Because the first thing you can think of is, you know, whatever happened to, you know, being, you know, strong, black and independent, not needed a man. Now you want a man to give you a house, but the man you're looking for is Esau to do it. He ain't doing this shit no more. He's broke. Your devil daddy is broke. Okay. And the Lord's breaking his ass. He's breaking. The Lord is breaking him. And if you trusted in the Lord and you would have tamed in your 51 years, you would have tamed a husband, man. You won't be going through this alone. Okay, and a man who finds a wife has fa finds favor in the Lord. So the Lord would have sustained you and your husband and your children. But I'm sure her, she was shaking her ass in the club. Back in them Uncle Luke days, everything was hee hee ha ha. You know, <laughs> beach week, bike week. You know all the vanities of, of, of lewdness. And look at the, look at her ending. Look at her ending thereof, man. Look at her ending. What man is going to take that? What man is going to accept her as a wife? You know, to be her covering. It ain't happening, man. That's why uh, when Yahawashah was going up to crucifixion and a uh, woman were crying. The Lord said, cry not for me, but cry, cry for yourselves and your daughters, man. For there should come a time where they're going to say, blessed be, it's going to be the barren. And that time is what is, is going to be it's going to be in Jacob's trouble. And when, and when uh, a society as we know it is changed forever. On this side, at least. You know? If you, got, if you got a lot of women and men, if everybody's on the streets and everybody's trying to survive and everybody's trying to get it how they live, you know? You have a 51-year-old woman who's crying past her prime. And you can tell back in the G, maybe like in the 90s, man, she probably looked real nice. No, but those days are gone. They come and gone. Okay, but you can tell. You know, you see a woman like that, then you you see another woman. She's 18, 19 in her youth. Probably hasn't known a man yet, which is a miracle here in Babylon, America. You women are so quick to spread your legs and use your sexuality to get the short-term rewards and crumbs. You know, so it's so it's hard to uh, come across a virgin in these times. But a woman who hasn't had any children is in her prime, young. Those women are going to be taken up. Those women are going to be chosen. You know? Yeah, this is real talk. This is what this is what, what it's going to come down to. You know, but let me continue Isaiah 32, 9 through 12. I'm going to read it all over. Let me continue. Rise up, you women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear to my speech. Many days and years 
shall you be troubled, you careless woman, for the vintage shall fail and the gathering shall not come. Tremble, you woman that are at ease, be troubled, you careless ones, strip you, make you bare, and girl sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lament for the teats in the pleasant fields and for the fruitful vine. Okay, y'all gonna miss food stamps. Y'all gonna miss, you know, child support. Y'all gonna miss. Y'all gonna miss the Federal Reserve in general. You're gonna miss that you can you can go to the strip club and come out with a couple of hundred dollars. You're gonna miss the internet having, uh, you know, uh, uh, video chats exposing yourself and prostituting yourself online and getting money cash out to your bank account. You're gonna miss all the ways that you can whore yourself and and and, and come up off of it because the Lord's gonna remove all of that, man. He's gonna remove it. You're going to miss it, man. And you're going to suffer. Similar to how this woman is suffering. Okay? And the Lord's going to lead for all you uh, daughters of Zion who's in your right mind or you've been repenting and trying to change. You know? The Lord's going to the Lord's gonna have mercy on you. Of course. Okay? The Lord's going to have mercy on you, man. He's going to lead you to a man of the Lord and have you sustained. He's going to have you camped out somewhere, you know, close to a body of water. You know, even if he brings down um, uh, angels to give you food. I mean, he's done many miracles, man. Rain manna from the heavens, man. The bread of the angels while the Israelites were in the wilderness. Cleaved the rock and formed the rivers. Fed his prophets through, through the birds of ravens, man. Through the mouths of ravens, man. You know, bringing food, flying food, dropping it off. You know, the Lord is going to do miracles in these last times. You know, he's going to make sure his people is all good. And that's part of believing and having faith in Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, man. And that's something you just got to know. But most of these most of these people don't have faith in Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. They have faith in white Jesus, paganism, and Edomite supremacy. They have faith in his, in his, in his, in his Caucasian government. They have faith in his wicked American society and the way things are, which is coming back and biting y'all in the ass. Okay, and it's going to. We just read it. The Lord is going to strip everything from you, woman. That's just what it's going to be. You know, a man being homeless, you can wash up, you know, get some baby wipes, you know, wipe your rod off, you know, wipe your butt with it, you know, wipe your underarms, wipe your face, and you're pretty much straight. You woman being homeless is a whole nother ordeal, man. You're going to be stinking. You know, you have you bleed every month. What are you going to do, man? What man is going to take you? What man is going to want you? And half the men who will desire you is just going to take you. They're gonna they're gonna fulfill their desires. You're gonna fulfill their thirst, and they're gonna continue about their way by themselves. They don't want you with a burden. There are not a lot of men of the Lord out here, man, who's gonna do the right thing. There's not a lot of men like that out here, man. Okay, this is just the truth. Isaiah chapter thirty-two, verse two, and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind. Does it say and a woman? No, and a man, and a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land this is going to take your how about me how shot it just utterly and it's and it's also the will of the of the elite they want to crash the economy they want to get rid of the federal reserve they want to shut everything down and that's on the left hand side but it's all to the fulfillment of uh your how about me how shot uh word because the deceived, the deceived and the deceiver are both are both his. Both belong to the Lord. The Lord got control of all of this, man. The Lord knows the devices of Hashaytan, and he uses the devices of Hashaytan to his glory. Okay? That's just what it is. Let's go to Isaiah. And so, so a man's going to be, the man's gonna, Isaiah 13 and 12, man, that's where we're going to end it. I'll make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man the golden wedge of Ophir, man. Not only are men going to be made few upon the earth, but the men that are here, man, you, you're going to have to find you an elect man of the Lord. If you don't find you an elect man of the Lord, you're going to die. Women are not going to make it, man. You're going to wither. You're going to perish. The Lord's bringing famine. You're not going to be able to go to the store. You might think, oh, I don't need it, man. I'll just go steal. I'll just go shoplift. Man, there ain't going to be no damn McDonald's. There ain't going to be no food. There's going to be famine out here, man. You, the Lord is shutting it all down. Okay? You know? And all you can think by watching, all, all I could think at least, by by watching this video, this woman is like, man, the chickens have how how have the chickens come home to roost? Independent, strong, don't need no man. Esau's been propping you up, and now he's letting you down.
okay? You trusted not in the ways of your Habashim, your Abishai. You trusted not in your man. You trusted not in the reverence of your Israelite man and to revere him as you revere the Lord. You woman don't got no respect for the Israelite man, so the Lord's going to cause all these nations, starting with Esau, Edom, to lose respect for you. Okay? And that's just what it's going to boil down to. I know in your heart and in your mind to all your sisters, you know, you think there's a level of entitlement because you have a vagina and because you're black, well, you're so-called black, because you're an Israelite and you have a vagina that every male should put on a cape and save you. But the truth of the matter is that's not what's going to happen here. In America, there's been a gender divide and a gender war, you know, and this is just the chickens coming home to roost and we're going to see a lot of this. Man, one day, just a little short story, man, one day I was delivering, I was working with Cisco at the time and I parked my truck and put on my 30 minute DOT break and I walked to uh, this place called Z Burger, it's called Z Burger, a little, you know, hamburger spot and uh, there was, there was a, it was a line out the door. You know, I wound up not going there, but, you know, I walked up there initially, but there was a line out of the door for people buying lunch because it was around noon. All the government workers, everyone's going to lunch. And there was a uh, there was a Israelite woman out there, man, so-called black woman out there with a cup getting angry, man, because nobody would give her anything. She was she was saying, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Can anybody help? I'm hungry. Can anybody help? She no one. Everyone ignored her. No one gave her anything. I didn't give her anything. You know what I'm saying? Because the spirit wasn't on me to do it. You know, I, the spirit wasn't on me. The spirit lets you know who to help and who not to help. <coughs> Slock you. She started getting mad and screaming. I'm hungry. Can anyone help me? Help me. She thought she was so entitled. You know? She was very entitled. All I could think is, you know, what happened to the strong black and what happened to the lie that Esau sold you that y'all actually believed in? Your degree is not going to mean anything. Nothing's going to mean everything is going to fold, man. Everything you trusted in is going to fail you. Your college degrees, you know, um, the welfare, you know, everything is going to fold, man. Social Security, I'm 29. I'm, I already know Social Security. I mean, we're not going to be here too much longer. But just per se, if I was, Social Security will fold before I'm 65. I would never receive it. That's how backwards everything, everything is in recession. Already, the collapse is methodically all in the spirit already been done, man. This place is over, you know. And unfortunately, a lot of you women are going to be over along with Babylon. Okay, hopefully, this is edifying. I know it was a lot of difficult message for a lot of people to handle for all you simps and all you feminist uh, women, but we're going to try to get you out of that spirit and get you in your right mind. You know, let's get back to the lost statues of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, back to the commandments. You women should be with men, Israelite men of your own race, from the tribe of your father pertaining to the book of Titus. You should not be laying around with these heathens. You should not be out here gathering abroad, practicing sexual liberation, because the Lord got your ending already sorted out. He's going to have you destroyed in a lowly, lowly estate, and you're not going to be able to get out of it. And you're not going to have no hope nor no peace. Okay? That is, it is what it is, man. There's an order to this, and we need to get back to the order of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. That's the order we need to cleave to. Every man and woman must have his own, uh, every woman must have her own husband and every man his own wife or wives if he so chooses to and have the resources to take care of them. You know, it is what it is, you know. Uh, Shalom till next time.